Alright, what's up everybody? This is Connix. I uh, haven't made a video in a minute, uh, so here's a new one for you. This is going to be uh, the new 1.9 Public Beta 3 version. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, changes and bug fixes and whatnot in the new Public Beta 3 version, which should be out sometime today. Uh, so I'm going to be going through and taking a look at some of the changes and additions, uh, because it is a pretty substantial list. Uh, a lot of new features people have been asking for, uh, changes to the existing features, tweaks, and all that good stuff. Uh, so let's get right into it. Now, as we all know, the new one of the new features is the album artwork is loaded to the side of the decks now in Scratch Live, if you uh, uh, check the show album artwork box down here. Uh, but the problem is that a lot of people complain that is this they don't want this down here. It takes up too much space, and it blocks all their crates and stuff like that. Uh, so now... If you want to just show the album artwork on the side of the decks, but not have it down here, blocking your crates, uh, the, the option has been moved to the setup menu. Uh, on the display tab, you're going to check the show album artwork on deck uh, right here. So click that box, and that will display the album artwork on the side of the decks, but not have the album artwork down here uh, in the crate area. I mean, if you still want it, you can still click that, but now uh, the two are separate from each other and not... Uh, combined into one thing as in the previous beta versions. Uh, another new uh, highly requested thing people have been wanting is custom columns in the history area. Uh, now you can select which columns you want to show or not show in the history area uh, because a lot of people wanted the comments and the BPM and stuff like that and um, you couldn't in the old uh, beta versions but now you can. Uh, so you can select your own columns in the history area now and they will get exported too when you export uh, your set list to a text file or a CSV file. Uh, so that's very nice indeed. Uh, there's also been a couple new buttons added into the history area. Uh, finally, we get a way to mark one song uh, back to just unplayed right here. So when you highlight a song, you'll see this option right here to mark unplayed. Uh, click that and that will turn the song uh, unplayed. And obviously if you want to uh, check it, make sure it played again, you can reselect it and mark played. So you can mark it as played or unplayed. Uh, so that's basically how you turn uh, one song back to white now, which has been a highly requested feature for a while now. Uh, what else do we have? Um, uh, sample triggers on the sample player. You can now assign uh, all the buttons if you use a TTM57 to the buttons on the 56. Uh, this is actually part of the, uh, in the public beta 2 version, but there was a little problem uh, where you couldn't scroll the list, so... Uh, now you can assign all the sample triggers to your buttons on your 57. So just right click it and uh, you're going to want to scroll up to the top. Uh, keep scrolling, it'll be these uh, up here, sample trigger 1 through 6. Now this was in the public beta 2 version, but this list wouldn't scroll up for some reason. That was a bug, so uh, that bummed a lot of people out. They couldn't assign the uh, triggers on the 57 to the buttons. Uh, also you can now assign the uh, what side you want the sample player to play out of. Uh, either the left, the M for the mix mode, or R for the right. You can also assign those to buttons now on the 57. And you can also assign the gain knob itself on the uh, sample player. So if you want to go to one of the uh, uh, P1 or P2 knob uh, assignments, uh, right-click it, and then you'll see the sample player gain. And then now in the sample player, um, you can adjust the gain knob right over here with the uh, one of your knobs on the 57, you can also select the outputs too with uh, any of the buttons. Uh, so those are some players. Uh, changes to the sample player. Also now, uh, the for those of you that were getting distortion in the M mode uh, on the uh, playing out the right side, this only affected Windows uh, apparently. Uh, I'm on a Mac so I can't verify this, but uh, that's supposed to be fixed. So uh, I know a lot of people were complaining about that also. Uh, what else do we have? Let's see. Um, a few cosmetic changes. When you load a song now uh, to a deck, the BPM and the pitch readout has been slightly moved and they're uh, larger font, so it'll make them more readable. Uh, so this is just a slight cosmetic change. Uh, the iTunes library, if you use iTunes instead of crates, so if we read the iTunes library now, uh, and before you couldn't collapse the iTunes library, it took up the entire site. Well, now you can collapse your iTunes library. Uh, so, uh, you can collapse, uh, you know, certain folders of the entire thing. If you don't want to, uh, show your entire iTunes library, it's just collapsible now. Uh, fine pitch sliders, for whatever reason, they were removed. 
uh, from internal mode in the first two public beta versions. Well, now the fine pitch sliders are back now in the public beta 3. So if we go to MIDI assignment now, the fine pitch sliders will be down here. And you can assign those back to MIDI. And uh, a couple people were uh, disappointed about that. Uh, another new feature is uh, that finally gets addressed, and this has been a long-standing one, is you can now assign, you can now make all your crates the same columns now and order. This has been a long-standing feature request for years now, is to be able to, uh, for some way to make all your crates have all the same column layout and format. Well, now there's this new option in the setup menu, and if you go to the library tab, you're going to see this option right here, custom crate columns. Now, click this box if you don't want all your crates to be the same, if you want to have crates have different column formats. But if you want all your crates to be the same, make sure this box is unchecked. Not checked, you're going to make sure it's unchecked, okay? And then go up to the all uh, crate up here at the top. And then set the columns that you want and the order you want them. So um, let's just add genre here. And uh, you can rearrange them by clicking and dragging the headers, and you can uh, drag them around whatever which way you want. So now, with when you have the custom crate columns option unchecked, all your crates now are going to have the format of the all crate. So all my crates are going to be song, genre, BPM, key, and artist. And then we can go through and look at them. Uh, song, genre, BPM, key, artist. Song, genre, BPM, key, artist. So. Uh, I think you get the point. So now, yes, you can finally set all your crates to have the same column order and format layout. And not have to go through and do each one individually, which is a big pain in the butt, especially if you have, you know, uh, dozens, if not hundreds of crates or uh, li iTunes library playlists. Uh, so that's uh, one of a, a big new addition in the public beta 3 version. And other than that, I think that's about it, all the main... Uh, new additions and changes other than that it's just minor you know bug fixes and tweaks um so yeah this is the first look at the new 1.9 public beta 3 version uh, which i mentioned which should be out sometime today or tomorrow